Hi, and thanks for joining. My name is Rob, and today I'm gonna to be taking you through a quick demonstration of using data feeds in Flexitive. Now, what I'm gonna be going through today is a quick demonstration of both a live version of data feeds, which will be the second half of the presentation, but the first half I'm gonna focus solely on a static version of data feeds where you can upload a feed to Flexitive and then from there use that to create designs and scale them very, very quickly. Um, before I get started, I wanted to quickly highlight the contact support icon. As always, if you have any questions after, the, uh, after this demonstration, feel free to reach out to us using that contact support icon. You can also uh, use this icon to search through our support articles. So if you have questions specifically on data feeds, for example, you can search that up here or any other subject you'd like. Uh, please feel free to use that and uh, let us know if you have any other questions. So to get started with data feeds, the first step is going to be uh, uploading that feed to Flexitive for me to work with. So I'm gonna jump over into my admin panel here. And you'll see in the admin panel, in addition to the usual users and billing tabs, there's this third data feeds tab. Now this will only be active if data feeds are available on your site. And from this third tab, I'll be able to upload, whether it's an actual file that I'm uploading or I'm adding a feed via a URL, I'll be able to upload my feed to Flexitive for me to use. So for example, if I have a specific, uh, say for example, an Excel file that I'd like to use, I can click here and then just select upload, switch this from custom files to all files, adapted bean. After selecting my file, I can click next, give my data feed a name. Generally best practice is to just give it a very unique name with I usually include a date. So I'll call this adaptive bean file with a date, hit submit. And you'll get this little green message at the top of the screen if the upload goes well. So this is called adaptive bean dash file dash date. From here, I could delete the feed, I can edit the feed, or I can upload a brand new file if I'd like uh, using these options here. Similarly, if I wanna add a feed from a URL, just click here, first paste in my URL. So I've got an XML URL that I've used before, click next, give my feed a name. So we'll call this one adaptive bean URL, again, give it a date, hit submit. And there's gonna be a slight difference when you're using a URL. The main one being it'll list the URL here for me to use. I can also refresh the URL. So if that's changed since the last time I uploaded the feed, I can always click this button to kind of update that URL for me, as well as, again, I can either edit or delete the properties of this uh, feed at any time using these two icons here. When uploading a feed to Flexitive, you're gonna to wanna to use an XML file for any time that you're using a URL. Uh, if you're uploading an actual file, however, you can also choose to upload an Excel file or a CSV depending on what you have available to you. So now that I've uploaded the feeds that I'm going to be using today, I'm actually going to close down this admin panel now and jump into editing on an actual design. So I'm just going to call this adaptive, adaptive bean, I'll call it cup, and again, give it a date. Just tap create. And then from there, I can choose, as with any Flexitive project, I can start with a fixed size, a responsive size. I'm actually gonna jump into a fixed size blank canvas today and uh, just start off with a 300 by 250. Jump into there. And then as usual, I'm just gonna upload some assets. So I'll just drag and drop them onto the uh, assets panel here. And while we wait for those to upload, just change my background to be white. So the process for designing in Flexitive with data feeds starts off looking very similar to everything you've done before. So I'll just drag and drop my background onto the canvas, um, turn it into my background layer here, set my focus point, looks good, add a call to action, and we'll add my logo at the top of the screen as well. Now where you're going to see a little bit of a difference is when we start actually adding in the um, the data feed element. So for example, uh, what I'm going to do for the image on my canvas is I'm actually going to upload this placeholder JPEG. So you'll see this is, right now, it's just a simple white square that I've added to the canvas. I can reposition, resize. But if I scroll down in the customize panel, at the very bottom, you'll see this dynamic design option. There's off and on, uh, there's an off and on toggle. So I'll just turn that on. And that's automatically going to turn this into a element that I can connect into a data feed. So from here, I can choose from this dropdown either one of the two feeds I just uploaded. So we'll use the file, for example. I can then choose a row from that file. So if I wanna make this, for example, my premium roast coffee, I can do that. 
And then from there, I can choose which unit or which uh, column to use. So for example, uh, I want this to be the image of my coffee cup. So I'll just select that and you'll see that enters in. Now, if I wanna do this for text, it's a very similar process. I'll just add some text to my canvas here. And then I'll jump back into the customize panel and at the bottom, you'll see this dynamic design option, turn that on and exactly the same process, file, choose my premium roast coffee. And then from there, let's choose the premium roast. As with any other text element, I can change my color. I can change the font, make this Roboto, simple Google font, adjust the size and positioning of the element to fit a little bit better. And then from here, if I wanted to say, for example, at a price, I could just simply, in this case, copy and paste this text element, give myself a second dynamic element set up in exactly the same way, and then just choose price, and it'll be $2. Now from here, I can add animations. I could, for example, uh, scale this out to any number of different sizes. It follows the exact same process that you're used to seeing in Flexit today, just using these data feed options instead. So now that I've built a 300 by 250 for this premium roast coffee cup, I wanted to quickly show you how easy it is to take this first design that I've built and use the data feed features we've got in Flexitive right now to scale this to a completely different design in seconds. So as you've all seen before, I'll just save this quickly. Um, duplicating a design and using that design as kind of a template for a new design in Flexitive is very, very quick. But with this particular design, I'm going to quickly show you how I can create a whole new design in seconds. So I'll just click duplicate just for the sake of uh, making it easy to differentiate. I'll change this name from cup to cold brew and then go in and edit this design. Now I'm going to quickly jump back into that 300 by 250. And then all I need to do to change this design so it's pointing to a different feed is select the element go into my customize panel, and then under row, I'll change it to cold brew. Same thing for the price, change it to cold brew. And we now have a completely new design in about six or seven clicks, which is, which is in incredibly fast. From here, I'll do the same thing again, save my design, go out, duplicate it, make this whole bean, edit the design, and then I can jump in in exactly the same process, just quickly change this across to B for whole beans instead. And so you can see how much quicker this is than, necess uh, than having to go in, restart the design from scratch. Um, you can also um, set this up with, uh, if you have a much larger feed, you can even search for specific um, for specific uh, products that you've built. So for example, if I had 20 or 30 different products, it might be a little bit slower to find whole beans. From in here, I can actually jump into, say for example, this text element. If I needed to specifically search for the premium roast coffee cup, I can use the search function to find that as well. So a lot of different ways to save time and really quite easily manage the assets for a large variety of different designs. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there are two different types of feeds that you can use in Flexitive. Up until now, we've been using the static version, uh, but what I wanted to cover now is the live version of a data feed. Now, the big benefit to a live version of a data feed is sometimes the information in a design that you're building can change over time. So say, for example, the price of beans in this coffee might change. I might have a different branding that shows up for this, uh, for this bag of beans, and I wanna be able to update that just by changing my feed. Now with the static feeds, um, they are intended to be snapshots in time where you can see this is what the price of beans were at the date that I uploaded the feed. But with a live feed, all you would need to do is jump into the original feed and change the actual value there. Um, and that would get propagated to your Flexitive designs. And I wanted to quickly cover how you can do that in Flexitive as well. So I'm actually going to create a new design here. We'll call this adaptive bean live. Give this a date as well hit create. And then again, I'm just going to jump into a simple 300 by 250 fixed size canvas. Now, the build process for this is going to look and feel again, very similar to everything you've seen before. So just upload my assets, change the background to be white. And then after this background uploads, I'll just set it as my background. 
Again, you've seen this all before, so I'm just going to kind of run through it quite quickly. Now, the main difference with um, these um, live data feeds between the static feeds is when you're uploading them to Flexit, if you actually do it within the editor itself, before we had to jump into the admin panel, for a live feed, we're actually going to add the widget to the canvas and use that, and in that widget specifically, add the feed. So I'll click on this little rocket ship for our widgets, and I'm going to add a live image widget to the canvas. Now, this is going to put a placeholder there. I can just resize, reposition it however I'd like. And then in this XML feed field, I can just paste in the URL for my XML feed, hit update. Once I do that, I can choose the unit. So I'll choose, I want this to be the image, and then I can choose between my three images. So cold brew, whole beans, coffee cup. Very, very similar to the, um, to the UI that you were using in the static feeds, just now we're using a live feed instead. Now, similar process, I can go into my widgets panel, add some live text, and once again, just paste my URL in, and name, premium roast, and I'll change this to Roboto. And change the text to be white, quickly reposition and resize. And again, this should look and feel exactly the same as the rest of the editing that you would do in Flexitive. From here, I'll just copy and paste this to give myself a second uh, text box really, really quickly. And then in here, I'll set this to actually be the price unit. So $2 instead of the premium roast. And then just quickly left align everything. So now that I've set up this feed, everything in here is now live. So if, for example, uh, the price of premium roast coffee was to change from $2 to $2.50, all I would have to do is jump into the original feed that was hooked into this design, change it to $2.50, and every single design, uh, whether it's in the editor or if it's live on, uh, on, say, a digital signage screen or you're using it for ad serving purposes, um, every single design associated with that feed will update within five seconds to show that new price. So it's a really, really easy and quick way to make sure that the information displayed about any product you are uh, advertising or showing on a screen is always the most up-to-date version of that information. So that really covers everything I was looking to chat about today regarding data feeds, both live and static versions of those feeds. Um, if you do have any other questions, again, please don't hesitate to reach out. Best way to get in touch with us is this contact support icon. You can send us a quick email. A member of the support team will get back to you within one business day uh, with any answers to your questions that we can provide. Um, as well, you can always search our articles. So for example, if you have questions specifically on data feeds, always feel free to use that. It's a great way to get information really, really quickly. Um, we have over 100 articles available um, and ready for you to use. So. Uh, thanks again for joining and uh, hope you have a great day.